All right, so here's a great example of the kind of things that Jake has to notice and look out for. This is dangerous. This is real dangerous. Now, like I said, this is a team effort. So even though this is, will be Jake's job to fix and maintain, I'm the one who noticed it. So I'm gonna have to do what I have to do. So what's happened here is uh, we've had a break-in. We've had a break-in and uh, the horses have gotten a little bit yancy. They're like, you know what? It's cold, miserable, rainy day and I just wanna have something in my belly and I don't wanna go have to hunt for it myself. So despite the green pastures, uh, I want some green hay. And there you have it. Did you just now see Ivy get her face stuck right there? It could have put out an eye. Bucky's is pushing so hard into this fence, he's not. Yes, Bucky's, I know, okay. You're just gonna thank y'all for the demonstration. Thank you for the demonstration. And so what has to be done here is an entire redo. Uh, we came by recently and did a quick fix, but this is gonna require a complete redo. Uh, for now, I'm going to take this green hay and throw it out to get the animals away from this area. All right, so this right here is quite the shit show. And this is something that we are not proud of. And this does not represent who we are at I'm a Survivor. And it's going to be fixed today. And uh, Ellie and I are going to tackle this job because if we don't, someone's going to get hurt. Someone's going to get hurt. Kitties, y'all wanna help? Yes, okay. All right, as we're taking down the fence, I've realized that this one post over here is one that holds our gate in place into our feed room. So I don't really wanna mess with that, but I, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put my, my next post, my big post here in front of it, so I can leave that intact. Uh, the wire though will have to come down because I'll put that on the outside of everything when I get it done. I've always admired you folks who live in places that have rocky soil, especially if you've had to do any digging in that type of soil, because it's not easy. Now, we normally have really good soil here. There's no rocks for the most part, but where I'm digging right now is where they pushed all that excess concrete back when they were building this barn slab. And so I'm having to break through Lots of concrete, and that puts a lot of work on you. But I got all four holes dug. I'm good. Some of you guys were not around back when I did all the fencing here, but I want you to see. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you first of all that I will self-admit that I was in the best shape of my life. I was in the best shape of my life when I went around the entire five acres and put every hole in the ground. Not only that, but I carried an 80 pound bag of concrete to each hole. And uh, this over here, that auger, it saves you a lot of work, but it's, it's a heavy machine and having to lift it and control it no, seriously, there was anyone who knew me at the time would admit it that d despite all the years of working out, I was in the best shape of my life because of that machine right there. The best physical shape of my life. So remember what I told you about, about me and Dan? What? You know about me and Dan growing up what we always did when we had to work? Not exactly. Y'all tried to make it into a game or something? A ch it was a workout. A challenge, a workout. So, you guys in this day and age go to the gym to work out. Me and Dan didn't have gyms in our days, right? They didn't? No, no. There was no gyms in our days. Maybe your high school had a, had a football player locker room There gym. was no Gold's Gym or 24-hour? No, I, kind of I did not know that. 
And so, and we had no money anyway. So what Ryan did was he was over here. We were, he's over there. He is, he's right there. Dan! He, he's literally right there. Walk over here if you get a second. <laughs> we used to make everything that we had to do, how, every chore that dad gave into a challenge or a workout. How convenient. So I wouldn't just pick up this post and carry it over there. That would be the easy thing to do, right? That's the easiest thing. I wouldn't exactly call it easy. Well, but me and Dan would do stuff like this right here. <laughs> turn it into squats. We would find a way to turn every job into something challenging. Hey, Dan. I just had a flashback. That's Ooh. what happens when you have an abundance of testosterone. Old teenagers. Well, I told y'all when we were growing up, we didn't go to gyms and stuff like that, right? No. But all the jobs that Dad made us do, we always turn into a challenge of, or a workout. Yeah, if we come over. We were working that barn, and Dad took all them traps and put on his shoulders and made him work with them. So tra Trey wanted to go trapping with Dad. So Dad made Trey carry all of his traps when he worked. Yeah, while he worked. Dad told Trey if he wanted to go trapping with him, he'd have to work for about the next hour with all those traps. Trey was my back. best friend when we were little, and so he came over to work with us one day, and my dad made Trey man up a little bit and carry all of his steel traps around while we worked around the barn. <laughs> Darn, I guess there isn't... Dan, do you ever think that because of the stupid stuff that coaches made us do, that's why our knees are all bad? Probably. Think about how, what coaches do. You know this. Coaches in, in this day and age make these young athletes take as heavy of a weight as they can, and they go all the way down until they're like, knees about to buckle, and then push it back up. Now, tell me this. It might do something for the athlete at that time, but what's it doing for their long term? Oh, yeah. The think, it makes you more explosive and generate more power, but the consequence now, the consequence is that your ACL is made of paper because you see a lot of even NFL players they get they have non contact injuries because yeah. just the leg gives out yeah. after years of doing well, that. About this. Coaches don't let you drink a bunch of water during football practice. No, they, no. But water you drink water so you don't get cramps, and in the water everybody's getting cramps all the time because they're dehydrated. <laughs> I, I think that times have changed from that because I gave my athletes water whenever they wanted it. We had to. We could not deny them water. Yeah. We could not deny them. Water. They make it dirty with that post. A lot of the, a lot of the good people, the good athletes, the ones that have been around a while, like Tom Brady, forty-five years old and still going, they do bands instead of like weights. Oh yeah. Tom Brady, he, he has a lot of strength, but it's not from weights and his elbow giving out. It's from bands and stuff, oh, el a lot the smarter. elasticity and all that. Yeah. yeah, bands are. I've worked out with bands, but bands are great. But uh, Dan, I was saying that uh, you probably don't remember this, but it was after Harvey, so I know everyone was busy. But I was probably in the best shape of my life before that Bear Grylls show because yeah. of putting all these posts in the ground huh. from that i would do post hole diggers if i couldn't use the auger and auger if i could when were you in the worst shape of your life well probably now you said you, i remember one time you said but oh you're making me uncomfortable ellie talking with that camera in my face about my weight gain oh sorry everyone's, you, my, you, everyone's staring at my belly right now <laughs> everyone's staring at my belly always sees mine every time i walk by <laughs> oh lord it don't matter good times good times well it's not perfect but we got the fence rebuilt and like i said we uh had to use old materials so it's not like we're cutting anything new and not too shabby for a job that's been kind of spliced together i uh i take ownership in the fact that that one round post was put in deeper than these round post and so we're gonna have a little knobby sticking up, which is gonna drive me crazy over time. But listen, I want to eventually, I think I've told you all this before, I want to eventually get a really nice solid, two big heavy duty gates over here so I can work from the backside. I can come in, open a gate and unload hay from the backside. Because if you remember, like a, like a grocery store shelf, the hay on this side has been here longer. It's, it's, it was baled earlier in the summer. This is May hay. Whereas the hay in the front is the fresher hay. And so we're kind of doing it backwards. So I do need to have some good heavy duty gates on this side. But for now, the animals are, they'll keep their heads out of there for a bit. 